beautiful co-creators, Lilu here. I'm in Stockholm today in uh, this beautiful Sturplan hotel that's been such a blessing because they have sponsored here me on the tour. So I want to thank them and thank the beautiful co-creators in Sweden and all over Scandinavia that have allowed this tour because it's kind of going into the end. And I'm here sitting with uh, with you, Lindell. You're uh, Australian, so to all the Aussies out there. Hi. <laughs> There is uh, many beautiful co-creators in Australia and you live now in Sweden, is that right? I do, I do. So Stockholm's now my home and I've been here three years yeah. and I love it. This time of year, it's amazing, oh. the summer. The summer and people might recognize you over in Australia because I've read in 2006 you were in the final competition of the uh, Australian Idol. I was. Oh, what a thrill. It was amazing. It was an awesome experience. Um, it was, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a great catalyst for a lot of growth, actually, in my life. So it, yeah. was, it was amazing. And then you moved to London to follow your career, to pursue your career, but then something was not quite right. Even actually quite a lot of darkness came in. I read Depression. Yeah, I, I had a management deal in a music management deal in the UK and I went there to pursue my dream and I had high hopes and ambitions and when I got there I basically went through a spiritual awakening. I moved away from everything that I knew in Australia, my network, my friends, my family and I found myself in this place all on my own and I, yeah, I fell into a really deep depression and I realized that the music industry, at least how I was in the music industry, that didn't resonate with me anymore. And the goals that I wanted and what was important to me was no longer important to me. So yeah, it was a real awakening experience. So if you want to know who you are, move overseas. That's it. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden, I guess, too, you were pushed towards uh, success and the limelight and... Uh and then it's n not sometimes really what we think it would it would it, it is. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, absolutely. And I think when doing a, a, a going through a big transition like moving overseas, um, as well as you know, obviously the the planetary shift at the moment is throwing a lot of people into a lot of chaos. So I was that was part of it as well for me, and it, it made me really ask, what's important to me? What if I climb this ladder? What will I be happy with what I find when I get to the top? And when I really was honest with myself, I realized that it wasn't. So I, yeah, I had to dream a new dream. And um, in the meantime, I moved to, I met my Swedish now fiance and moved to, to Sweden. So yeah. And you decided, I, I love this because I'm just holding your, your first book and uh, more than a book, it's a, it's a daily uh, greatness journal, a practical guide for consciously creating your days. And this is quite something. I mean, so we're talking here, uh, a 500 pages type of journal where, tell us where this came from. Why do you feel this is an important tool um, for you? When I was going through a lot of my depression and, and the transition out of the music industry and, and really looking for what my purpose is and what I'm here to do, I had to create uh, a kind of ritual, a daily ritual to, to shift me out of that, out of old behavior patterns, out of old unconscious thought patterns and really start to get real, get and take responsibility for what was going on in my life. And if I wanted to go forward with more purpose in my life, I had to get very conscious of what was going on for me. So I created a kind of daily ritual that helped me make sense of what was going on and, and really connect with what I call my inner genius. And I'd been a, a personal you know, a self-help and personal growth student for 10 years at, by this stage. So, and I had all of this knowledge in in my head, but I couldn't understand why was my life not upgrading? Why couldn't I uh, use all of that knowledge? But I realized it was because I wasn't consistently taking action in my life and I wasn't applying what I knew. I'd read all the books, I had all the knowledge, but I wasn't consistently applying it. So I was really in a lot of wishful thinking and I think when we take responsibility and we start putting into practice all that we know, because so many of us, especially people that 
watch your your show, uh, they've read a million self-help books. So they don't need any more knowledge. They need to, and this is what I figured out for myself, we need to apply it in our daily life. And so that's what this the journal is all about. It's about applying what you know in a daily step-by-step process to help you connect to your inner genius and upgrade your life. Mm-hmm. I like the upgrade. Yeah, upgrade's good. Yeah. So what does it take to upgrade? Is that is that does it start with the with the posi- I mean we, we it's a statement. It's uh it's what? It's a declaration, it's a turning point where we say enough this is this is I want something else in my life. How did you see that? How did you shift yourself into that that co-creative mode that is much bigger? Yeah. Um I think it is an intention. It's you know often we have to hit rock bottom to take our life to the next level and there's a purpose in that and so the um the intention was there to upgrade my life for a long time but it wasn't until I started to uh believe that I had a a bigger purpose I think that's that's a very important shift to make that you can make a difference and that your voice is important you have a great message and I think that self having that self esteem. I, I, I even though I was a performer and I was on stage a lot. In truth, what I worked out was I actually had very low self esteem. So I had to go through a whole process, a whole personal transformation to shift me into a place where I genuinely believed that what I had to say and my message mattered. So that was really the catalyst, and that's why this book sort of it, it was um, really. It came out of that time because I, I guess I had that internal shift that I had a message, and uh, I also had. And you mattered. And I mattered. Well, I- exactly. And we go through our dif- all the difficult times that we go through in life, all have a very amazing purpose. I say, you know, if you're going through a transitional shift, it's your most amazing gift because it's always at the other side of that that you realize, wow, you know. I do have a lot to give and and when you start stepping into that, you know, amazing things happen. Mm. And and it must have been so scary to come from this this really uh set world where you you must have an agent and you know you you perform and there is the the attention on you to finding who you really are. Finding and and kind of stripping off all those layers and uh and 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 discovering a frightened soul i'm sure you've been going through moments of uh, despair and of uh, just like uh, what am i going to do with my life am i really going to continue or am i going to move forward and because it's it's so difficult i see so many people transitioning and the you know the fears that are that are so so you would you would write your fears also in this journal or is it just about the positive gratitude messages is that is that all like both side type of journal? <laughs> it is. It's both side. I think you can't. Um, w- I believe that you can't just focus all on the positive because we need to look at our shadow. We need to look at all the unconscious parts of ourselves. So we have to get very honest, and you know it's difficult to do, but we have to. That's what allows us to become more self aware. Yeah. When we bring that into the conscious, into our consciousness, it no longer has power over us. So yeah, we, it's it is looking at all of the, the, uh, it's be- helping you become more self-conscious. Sorry, so more self-aware, not more yeah. self-conscious, but more self-aware, and at the same time, creating and uh, training your mind to think in a more positive, more productive, and more empowered way. Yeah. And, and and just a line and moving all of it in the same direction because I, c- I can see so many times one of my thoughts go this way and I'm like no, no 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 you're not good enough and it's like sabotaging and it's coming those old thoughts come right up straight up yeah absolutely and often I notice myself it'll be almost instantly after you you'll you'll have a good thought you know a, a positive thought I could do this and then almost instantly there'll be a negative thought coming in to counteract it so it is it's about just going okay oh hi hi yeah I hear you I hear you but you you can go and uh you know sit down you 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 know you've had your say but so yeah I agree with you it has to be a balance between the positive and and the negative 
So, so you process in here what's going on, and you make affirmations, and and uh, you you believe in in I guess uh, looking at life in a holistic way. Because yeah, absolutely. So. The, the beginning of the journal is actually... Ooh, we hear broken glass. I wonder why that is. Because I know there's no coincidence in interviews. I, wonder, I don't know. Broken glass. Broken glass. Broken glass. <laughs> I don't know. It's yeah. a song title. Um, <laughs> it's in the beginning of the, the journal. It's There's a whole lot of um, worksheet, worksheets that help you to really understand where you are now and where you want to go and then the the daily step-by-step -step process um, is eight daily steps that helps you um, achieve self-mastery really it's about connecting to your inner genius applying what we already know and uh, mastering our mindset so and then at the end there's a yearly review that helps you celebrate your achievements of what you've done throughout the year and then uh, and quarterly reviews that so it keeps you committed accountable and motivated and uh, and yeah, it's a it's a it's a guided process. So you you don't have to think. You just have it on your side bed, and you you work through it. And it's it's very um, it's very it, profound shifts can really come. It, it's a very simple process, but it, it really does create very profound shifts in your life. Mm. I can totally see that. I'm very excited. There's and it's so beautiful. I don't know if we can see it here, but and you self published. Uh -huh. I want to congratulate you on this because I this is a big one to I'm all about dreaming our dream and making it happen and sometimes we have a preconceived notion of how it can look like but to really know unconditionally that we have to put something out and we want to do it anyway and we allow this process to unfold mm -hmm. and who knows where it's going to go from here mm -hmm. but it's it's courageous mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah well you know so many times in this process uh there, it, I didn't know how I was going to make it happen. You know, it's it, it's a huge learning curve if you've never published a book or any project that you don't you've never done before. It, it always seems extremely scary, and you and to be honest, you never actually know how big the project is until you get into it, <laughs> and then you go, "Whoa, I I didn't know what I was getting into." So it's a huge project, um, but I can there's I can give you a whole lot of tips I can help you know now once you've done it once you get a you know a blueprint for how to do it and I think that's what I'm excited about for my next book because I feel that this was an 18 month project of creating this book from start to finish with points throughout where I didn't know how we were going to do it how we were going to fund it you know the, or the design wasn't right or I, you know all the obstacles that come up but I was met I was writing a book on how to consciously create your life so I had to step up you know yeah. there was no and I applied all of what I'm teaching and all of what is in this journal in in my life to and in this project to to come up with this as the outcome so I know it works yeah, yeah. What are the fundamental, uh, th well, not fundamental, but the things that you really believe in your heart are essential for us to get right now, especially going through this shift and that you have learned? I know we talked a little bit about them, but what, what would you like people to really get about life? And about themselves? <laughs> and about themselves. I think, I think what I'm learning is as I grew up and my my absolute dream that I was extremely attached to as a singer um, was ended up being my prison and I think it didn't it never made logical sense for me to ever understand how I could give up a dream but what I've learned through the process is that often we have to give up dreams and um, and so, but on the other side of that, if you have the courage to do it, there's incredible, you open up to so much more of your potential mm -hmm. and your, and not only that, you step into your true purpose. And the idea of this, this idea of your true purpose is sort of very elusive. And, and if you're not, if you haven't felt it or touched it, or you're not quite there yet, it can feel like there's no such thing as a purpose, you know, whatever you're doing, you're meant to be doing. But the more that I walk on this journey and the more that I let go um, of what I thought I was and what I thought I was meant to be doing, the more I get in touch with this part of me that 
understands that we actually do have a very amazing purpose and, and path. Um, and I don't think I, I'm definitely not there yet, but I think if we have the courage to, to let go, we will be presented with a beautiful path. And, and I think that's the most difficult time during this transition yeah. is that we're having to let go of things that we hold so dearly to. And that could be people. It could be a dream. It could be material things. It could be a flat. Yeah. It could be your home. It could be, um, you know, you're holding on to your financial security, all of that stuff. Um, and we have to go through the fire um, to reach the other side. And I, I don't know if there's a way around it. There wasn't for me. I, I absolutely had to go through the fire and hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And I know so many other people that have had to do that as well. And I think to just have courage and know that, you know, on the other side, there is amazing things. I think that is probably the most essential mm -hmm. lesson that I've learned through my journey over the past five or six years. Yeah. And I, and I know and feel how uh, difficult this is to go through too because I went through it in London, the same city. And it's quite a, a city that shakes you up. But there is those panic attacks that come and then we hear those wonderful positive messages and it's like, yeah, that's for her. She already was on this path and this and that. But it is like where everything is, is w everything is collapsing. Everything is, we're, we're nothing. It's like pure suffering and... and uh, what is the, f for you, was it writing or w what else is there in those moments of, of, of uh, total chaos and when everything is shaking up and when nothing makes sense and when uh, it's others but not me? What to do in those moments? Do we just have to drift or? <laughs> yeah, I think that the hardest thing for me was powerlessness. When you just feel like mm. you've got no power to change anything. Everything feels, everything, like you say, everything collapses. It literally feels like things are being just pulled from underneath you. Uh, you can't... More and more. When you think it's the end, there's more coming. Exactly. And you can't... Every, everything feels like it's just slipping through your fingers. And if you've been a confident person in your life and, and you had a, a very definite uh, direction and all of a sudden that falls away and that collapses underneath you... It, and that powerlessness comes into your life, you can fight it. And, and I mean, of course, I did for, for a long time and I wanted things to go my way and you get angry and you go through all of the, the emotions. But I think what helped me actually, one of the, the fundamental learnings was when I read a book called Transcending Levels of Consciousness by David Hawkins, Dr. David R. Hawkins. Um, when you understand the levels of consciousness that we're, we all live at, uh, you know, we all um, embody a different level of consciousness. And to understand that life and moving up levels of consciousness isn't just about um, doing personal growth and reading books. And there has, there's, a, there's a fundamental shift in an alchemical process that happens to us. And that is, you know, if we truly want growth, we can't escape that. Mm -hmm. So you really have to surrender to it. And then it could be a couple of years. It could be a, it could be a few weeks, could be a few months, could be a couple of years. For me, it was. And eventually, you drift up on the shore and you, you're on a, a new abundant island and lots of opportunities are being presented. And I think that's where a lot of us are now. And, and if, you, if, you know, whoever isn't there yet, they will be, you know, because that is the journey. Mm -hmm. And... I don't think we talk about this, you know, people don't... Not enough, we should be on TV every day. What's going on? The big media, come on. I mean, this yeah. is what we should be talking about on TV instead of... I mean, nothing wrong with American Idol or Australian Idol, but I'm so glad you stepped up to this other level to, to share this with so much beauty and confidence and, and having gone through this yourself. Mm. Well, you're right, because I think so many people are in chaos. I hear a lot of my friends who are still are in Australia um, that I hear are going through difficult times but they don't have any framework or any reference for what's going on yeah. and it's only because I'm a you know ridiculous researcher and I google and I just you know that's 
I, when I first moved overseas, I needed to understand what is going on for me and, and I did a lot of research and I, I started to understand and get a framework for what was going on. So, but if you don't have a framework, that is, it's an incredibly stressful and confusing time to, and you, you don't understand how on earth, you know, you can get to the other side or even what, what the purpose of it is. So, um, That's where the day by day really helps because it is either you take on your own journal and you write and uh, and this, but it can be very chaotic. Yeah, and, and a little bit of structure mm -hmm. can help a big, big way. I can definitely relate to that. That's why I think it's genius what you have created. Mm -hmm. uh, the the chaos. I love it because in the moment of when the, when we become butterflies, mm -hmm. it's like there's this transformation, you know, and every cell shakes up. And when the hard times is here, it feels like we're we're go we're going through, you know, the cells, everything. We're 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 being activated to, to to this new level, and so of course there is those hard moments, mm -hmm. so that we can emerge mm -hmm. into this new human being, this new. I think this is what this planet is doing right now, and all of us. Mm, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, um, I agree. And you know, you hear about this the metaphor of the the caterpillar becoming the butterfly, and and. It, but it, you can't imagine that humans actually go through that as well until you go through it. Yeah. And and it is through the chaos and it is through going through the dark night of the soul, you know, when the the the, cat, the caterpillars in the chrysalis and, and um, that whole process is, um, it's beautiful and it's painful and it's, you know, it's, it's just the most insane process, but you wouldn't change it for the world. Because on the other side, you look it back. It's juicy. It's juicy. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah. It's so vibrant. <laughs> it is, yeah. Everything makes so much more sense. But it takes, I think we, as human beings, we have resistance. Because otherwise the change can happen very fast. Yes, of course. Yeah. Who are some of your inspiring throughout this, this spiritual awakening that you had? Is there some other books that you really enjoyed? Some teachings that you would like to share with us today? Um, David R. Hawkins, just amazing, power versus force, uh, transcending levels of consciousness that puts so much into perspective for me. And of course, Eckhart Tolle, um, I love his teachings, but I also feel that when his teachings aren't um, interpreted correctly, we can fall into apathy and not take action in our lives. And I, and I saw myself fall into that mm -hmm. trap. And we're not fully living. We're not fully, we haven't, I think it's a, a, a phase that we go through um, where we, we sort of in the phase of acceptance and, and, and apathy, but we're not living and fully expressing who we truly are and bringing our message and our purpose into the world. So I think, I love his teaching, but I, I, I get a little bit concerned that, that people aren't interpreting his teaching correctly and they get stuck mm -hmm. at a certain level because I certainly did. Um, and, I mean, there's so many. There's so many. There, there's some incredible books out there. Um, but we, again, my book is about applying what, what we know. I mean, we read so much um, and it, it really is about applying and, and taking action and taking responsibility and putting everything that we know into action so that we can upgrade our lives. Mm. Beautiful. I, I, I so much enjoy this conversation and meeting you. And uh, I'm still amazed about your, your journey and what it took you to, to break free from this cocoon. Uh, it's not a cocoon, but it's, it's a big one to, to break free. And I think it's a great example and that will give lots of courage to people. And I, I'm really looking forward to using this daily greatness journal. Oh, my goodness creating your days because we can create our reality we are beautiful co-creators aren't we <gasps> to all australians out there aren't you proud of australia is she <laughs> rock or what this is my first australian live uh interview i've done i've met many australians i love australians uh i've done interviews over skype with australians but haven't gone to australia so the juicy tour will come to australia in 2013 2000 14 very soon there's a lot happening there it really is quite something new zealand as well yeah. do you go back i do every year love it absolutely love it uh, yeah i gotta put you in touch with megan castron okay. oprah showed up at her house 
Yeah. Oh, Pra showed up. Pra Megan, lots of love to you. Yeah, it's a beautiful co creator down there in Melbourne. And knock, knock, knock. Oprah is here with bottles of tequila. It's one of those delicious, magical creations. Yeah, how can we even dream of this? I mean, we can. She she was dreaming of it, I know that. But it brings so much joy to know that uh, miracles are possible, beautiful shifts are, are possible, uh, transformation is possible, and thank you, thank you for having the courage to, to make your dream come true and living your life purpose. Thank you, Lulu. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Mm. Much love, my delicious co-creators from amazing Stockholm in Sweden. Bye.